Football Watching Gears, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, a while back, we made a trip to my favorite junkyard and stumbled across a 69 International cab over truck. There's the spot. Right there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, it was rough, and it appeared to be full of rat's nests, but it was solid. That is she goes. So, we couldn't help but drag it home. Keep going, we got it. Now, once we got it in the shop, we found that it actually was full of rat's nests. <laughs> Some other stuff here, don't know what it is. What the heck that is. Mark, why don't you smell that? Tell me what that is. Oh, <laughs> that is, uh... oh man. That's chicken poop, man. This thing's got chicken crap in it. What the heck? So we spent some time cleaning everything up. You're going to be amazed. I'm telling you, you're going to be amazed. Then we tore into the mechanicals. Wow. There's hardly any sludge at all. And slowly coaxed the old engine back to life. <laughs> it sounds awesome! After that, the whole drivetrain was pulled out to make room for a Duramax diesel that we found in a different salvage yard. But this one was completely rebuilt and made even hotter with parts from PPE. Then, custom engine and transmission mounts were fabricated. fit the Duramax engine and Allison transmission into its new home between the frame rails. With the drivetrain dialed in, it was time to turn our attention to the business end of the truck. And since there was no real record of what this thing had actually been in its former life, other than it had been in the Navy, I decided it was the perfect candidate to become a hot rod tow truck. So, axles from a late model Chevy Top Kick truck were located in another salvage yard. And then they were mounted in the frame using a Kelderman air suspension system. Let me five and a half, Jerry. A vintage Holmes 600 dual record boom was located in, you guessed it, another junkyard, this time in Connecticut. And special brackets were fabricated to mount it to the international frame. Of course, a real hot rod needs a real hot rod fuel tank. So twin vintage Slitz beer kegs were sourced off of eBay and then converted to service fuel tanks, one on each side. For towing and recovery power, we took two worn electric 15,000 pound industrial winches and set them up to take the place of the old PTO winch system. need to center this thing up pretty much perfectly. You gotta go that way a little bit. 
Then we finished it off with a custom box and light bar from In The Ditch Towing. All right. To give us room to carry, you know, junk. It's a tow truck. Hey, we're back and working on heavy metal, our 69 International Tow Truck. Now, this project is really unique because almost all of the major components came either out of a salvage yard or eBay. The diesel engine, the tow bed, the beer kegs, heck, even the truck itself. Now, at this point, the last major component that really needed attention was the cab. So, after fighting rusty bolts for a few hours, we rolled the truck in and we pulled it off with a hoist. We don't call it heavy metal for nothing. Here we go. Such a smooth drivetrain. All right, here we go. That's the JJ drivetrain. Jonathan and Jamie. All right, All right brakes, brakes, brakes. Stop, stop. Hell, oh, that'll buff right out. <laughs> Now, if you watch Gears very much, you know we're always eager to get involved with trade and technical schools because it's a great way for the students to get involved in some cool, high-profile projects. And the Hot Rod Institute in South Dakota is one school that we've done stuff with in the past because they are one of the premier technical schools out there. The bar's been raised, and if we don't keep up with it, it's going to get lost. And our guys are just really stepping it up. They're enthusiastic. It's super fun to work with. All right, it's a new rocks! With a focus on high-end metal fabrication, upholstery, painting, and engine building, See right down here. it's a great training ground for someone who wants to pursue a career as a professional car builder or as a shop owner. We cover everything bumper to bumper on the car from the chassis. Two different levels of sheet metal fabrication now. Just because like, if you're building a car, the bodywork is 80% of the build. Uh, we have a refinishing class. Those are each three months long and we have an upholstery class. And we have our mechanical area we call hot rod performance. And we have a custom motorcycle class. With their own rod shop right on the campus, getting the students to do some metal and paint and upholstery work on the heavy metal cab is a great way to showcase the school and what they're capable of. In order to do hot rods and muscle car restorations, it's, it's all about doing quality and making sure it's better than the factory put out. And we're trying to give our customers and our students uh, way better quality. I need to be a little bit of an overhang build. So the first step was to walk around the cab with Doug and lay out the modifications that I wanted them to do. Obviously, any rusty or damaged areas would need to be cut out and repaired with new metal. You know, there were just little rusty spots. You know, it's, it's a prime example for small patch panels. I might have every one in my class next time do a patch panel on it. You know. Custom touches like French turn signal lamps and roof lights were also discussed. If you want to get creative up here and kind of French something down in there, I'm all for that. I don't know if you're familiar with these trucks, but they had turn signals right here that looked like Mickey Mouse ears sticking out. They came out right here. And I thought it would be kind of cool if you did something like that with one of these little beehives in there. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Laying out the interior is important at this point, too. So I spent some time with Doug going through everything from seat placement to shifter location to the way I plan to assemble the dash. Paint colors and graphics are another very important aspect of planning a project, especially since the tow bed and toolboxes won't be painted to match until the cab comes back to me. So time was spent planning that out as well. Finally, we loaded it all up and strapped it down for the trip to the Black Hills of South Dakota and the Hot Rod Institute. Hey, 
Hey, welcome back to Gears. I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering just what exactly this thing is that had been rolling around on this dolly. Well, this is the chassis of that old snowcat that we rolled in a while back, but it didn't look quite like this. It looked more like this. Now, obviously, after years in the Forest Service in Maryland, the old cat was pretty run down. <laughs> So the first step was to see if we could get it running and moving to determine what kind of shape the engine and transmission was in. Nasty fluids were changed. The fuel system was gone through. electrical and charging systems as well. Yeah, that caused, look at that, bare, bare wire coming right off the coil. That would have caused some issues. And with the turn of the key, the little Ford V4 engine roared to life. RPM gauge is working. Oil pressure, 30 pounds. So you think I can make this thing move? There you go. All right. <laughs> Once we knew the engine was in good shape, we laid out our plans for the body. Over the gas tank. Ready? There we go. All right, I want you to set it straight down. And just roll the doors forward. <laughs> which included a custom bed and a newer suspension system. As my knee collapses. <laughs> Looks good. Then I blew it completely apart and shipped it off to the sandblaster so he could strip it down and reveal all the dirty, nasty little secrets that had been done to this thing over the years. And there were plenty. Check it out. Nasty welds, broken and cracked cross members, rusty metal. These are some of the typical surprises you're going to find in an old off-road vehicle like this. But overall, this is in surprisingly good shape. But before we jump into a bunch of fabrication on a new suspension, we need to finish up the engine and drivetrain. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, well, what's the point of that? I mean, you got it running, right? Well, right, we got it running, but there's a big difference between getting something running and making it usable and reliable. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Starting with an engine rebuild kit, I disassembled the engine and replaced all the gaskets and cleaned everything up. This includes water pump gaskets, oil pan gaskets, intake, exhaust, everything. If you don't do this, you can expect plenty of leaks. Then when you add the rebuilt carburetor, restored valve covers with a fresh coat of black crinkle paint, and a new Tough Stuff one wire alternator, we basically have an engine that not only looks good, but should give us many, many years of reliable service. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we have just finished going through our little Ford V4 engine to get ready to go back in the Snowcat. Now, as you can see, we've cleaned it up, painted it, replaced all the gaskets, so this thing's going to be sealed up, ready to go when the cat is. Now, a lot of people realize the importance of doing this to an engine, but it's easy to overlook the rest of the drivetrain, and there's a lot of wear and tear that goes into the transmission in the rear end. So if you're doing a restoration project and you want it to run as well as the engine does, well, you need to spend some time on the drivetrain. So first, we're going to dig into this, clean it up, drain the fluids, and see what we got.
brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Wow. When you're working on an old transmission or rear end, it's important to really look the parts over if you're going to reuse them. For example, this clutch plate looks to be in really good shape. Look, it's got plenty of wear left in it. But if you'll also notice, it is completely saturated with oil. And it is virtually impossible to get all that oil off. I don't care how much gasoline you soak it in. Some of that oil will stay in there, the clutch will get hot, it'll get on the flywheel, and it will slip. So that needs to be replaced. I don't care how good it looks. But you can't just stop there. You've got to find out where that leak's coming from. If you'll notice, when we pulled this snout off, the seal on the input shaft came out in two pieces. So there is where the leak's coming from. That needs to be replaced. And you need to take the same approach with the pilot bushing, the throwout bearing, the shifter fork, the linkage, everything. Because now is the time to fix everything right before you put it all back in. Because you really don't want to be pulling all this out again anytime soon. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. The rear end is the same deal, but with something as unique as a snowcat, you need to check the steering bands. So off comes the back cover. Now, for those of you that have never been inside of a skid steer style rear end, this is how it works. Basically, you have a transmission up here and then a differential back here, all wrapped into one big heavy unit. Now, here's where it gets kind of weird. Notice on each axle, you have a big metal drum that is surrounded by a steering brake. So when you hit your steering lever, it stops one side and allows you to steer. Very simple, very effective. Now, what you need to look for in here is any kind of damage or wear to the steering bands. For example, notice how this one's bent a little bit. Then you got some sort of weird clip, and even these roll pins are partially out. So, somebody's been dinking around in here. So we're gonna fix all that. Another thing that you need to look for is any kind of damage to the teeth or the gears. You wanna check down in the bottom, see if there's any metal shavings or metal particles that would indicate damage to the gears. Fortunately, ours look really, really good. So we're just gonna replace the bands and we'll be good to go. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Greg Froling from Fate, Texas. And he said that when his son was about 12 years old, they decided that it was time to get him his first car project. So they hunted around at a bunch of the auctions until they found this. Now, what you're looking at is a 2002 Mustang with the V6 and what looked like minimal damage. The best part was it was only 450 bucks. <laughs> that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. Sure enough, they said as soon as they got it home, they put some gas in it, charged up the battery, and took it down the road, and they found out that the car needed a little more than they thought. But that's why they got it. So they jumped into it. First thing they did was repair the rear quarter panel. Then they scrounged through the local wrecking yards and found a GT bumper cover and a posi rear end and some other stuff. Now, since they say they plan on autocross in this car, they also welded in some subframe connectors and they welded up the torque boxes, which is really cool because it gave Gary a chance to teach his son how to weld. That's a skill he will cherish for the rest of his life. Now, of course, there's plenty to do. They say they still want to do the paint and body. They have to put in a roll bar and some carpeting. And of course, they want to hot rod that V6 to the tune of about 300 horsepower. <laughs> that will be really cool. So when is it going to be done? Well, Greg says they're on track to finish the car by the time his son can legally drive, which means his son gets to drive a car he built to high school. Man, that is so cool. And Greg, it's really neat that you're able to share your knowledge with your son and his subsequent friends, because I guarantee you that they're watching too. So to recognize such a cool project, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab. We're gonna give you one of these big bench vices, because I'm sure that you need that. We're also gonna give you one of our project planning books, so you can keep accurate records of everything you've done and will do to that car. 
and then we're going to give you a Gears t-shirt because obviously you're a certified gearhead. And then finally, we're going to give you an O'Reilly gift card so you can offset some of the costs of the project. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and click on What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. All right, that wraps up the show for us today. I know that you are dying to get out there and try to find a $450 Mustang or a $500 cab over truck. They're out there. All you have to do is get out there and find them. We'll see you next time.